Welcome again, everyone, to Between the Lines. And now I will pass it over to you, Robert and Dr. Rocio. It's great to be with you all. So we thought um, maybe we just take a little bit of time to introduce ourselves in a in a, in a deeper way. Um, maybe I'll I'll go first, and then I'll pass to you. So I'm introducing myself as a son of Ireland from the clans of the Kinsellas, the Moycalls, the Ruddies, the Parles, the O'Briens, and the Fehans. I come from the lineage of the Tua de Danon, and I call in the guiding support of Undini Shi, the wee people. I acknowledge the land that I come from, of Kilwanton, the mountains of Wicklow, the river Dargal, and the woods and forests of Glendalock. Beautiful, thank you. A Chicana Mexicana, and I am the eldest daughter of an eldest daughter of an orphan daughter. I come from a matriarchal lineage and honoring my mothers that I knew, but also the mothers that came before me. I very much work with the ancient matriarchs and so also calling in my mothers and ancestors and those of you all present, even if you don't know your ancestors' names, even if you don't know the peoples that you come from, uh, calling them in because they know you and so honoring them. I also want to call in the four directions and the Quero Inca lineage, which is the lineage that I'm initiated into as a medicine woman and that I continue in apprenticeship with and the sacred mountains that guide and speak to me, the trees and our plant and animal kin. And so just honoring them all and welcoming them in and welcoming you all as well. Uh, lastly, Beautiful. I want to share with you that I am a mama and that's also an important part of who I am in my journey. I have a seven year old um, and I'm an unschooling mama. And so I also want to honor our descendants, our ancestors, but our, also our descendants. And when the work gets tough, it's my child that, you know, holds me accountable to the work, knowing that we have a responsibility and duty to the generations to come, honoring them as well. Thank you. And that spirit I'll call in my beautiful son. Mm -hmm. So we get to have a beautiful conversation and we both lean towards emergence rather than plans. Mm -hmm. um, so we have no idea what we're going to talk about. <laughs> and, um, and there might be time where we're talking, there might be time where you're asking me questions, I'm asking you questions. There might be time where we're practicing all as a community or we're, we're asking questions to the community or we're opening it up for the community to ask questions to either one of us. Mm -hmm. um, but, but maybe to warm us up, uh, we can both ask each other a question. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to go first this time? Sure. Thank you for that. Um, you know, what, what feels really aligned in this moment um, is what helps you keep the faith. Right. Knowing that this, you know, these are turbulent times, they are intense times, and there is so much work to do and work that we're already doing. And I'm wondering when it gets hard, um, whether that's in your community or leadership or parenting, what helps you keep the faith, what helps keep you showing up? Yeah. Um, I try to draw on as many possible resources as I can. Um, I 
think things like community um, and my deep love and connection with the earth um, and laughter, and all these things kind of give me a sense of strength and resilience. Mm. And in some ways, the worse it gets, the more resilient I feel, mm. and the more committed I feel. Um, but the thing that keeps my faith going is, I think it's two things. It's the love that I feel in my bones for this world and knowing that I'm not alone, that I'm not the only person that loves this world. Mm -hmm. And and then I, I look to history. And yes, we've never faced what we're facing now. Um, but we have faced very dark days. And I don't know why we can't do it sooner as a society, mm -hmm. but somehow Dr. Dr. King says that, you know, the long arc bends towards justice. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that is, that is true. And so I hold on to that. I believe that humanity, unfortunately, often right at the cliff's edge, mm -hmm. um, turns back to its, its best self mm -hmm. um, and decides to live a different way. Mm -hmm. um, and I just pray that that's true in these times. Mm -hmm. Yes. What about you? What keeps your faith? I think the first is the duty and responsibility that I have to my child. You know, I, I can't afford to give up, you know, um, because there is a life that's dependent on me and um and so that's my first it's my responsibility as a mother as a parent uh, and really honoring that and secondly it's the indigenous prophecies that many nations share that this is yes a time of great change and also it's a time where balance and harmony will be restored so I lean on the wisdom of those that came before us, the medicine people, the wise people that shared those prophecies. And so who am I, you know, I, I am human. And so I will doubt and, and I will, you know, sometimes feel over, overwhelmed, but those that came before me have shared for millennia that that harmony and balance will be restored. So I hold on to that. And I also know on a soul level that we were not just born to suffer, that yes, we see great suffering, but that's not our sole purpose here. And so we were also called here in human form to birth. We were called here to share our gifts. We were called here to live, right? And so I hold on to that as well. I know, I just know that that is part of our purpose here as well. Yeah, I love that you bring that in. Any time um, that I've journeyed uh, to and with my ancestors um, for guidance every single time, it either is the main message or it's a, like a PS at the end. Mm -hmm. You're saying, by the way, you're supposed to be enjoying yourself. Yeah, you're supposed to be having fun. You're supposed to be dancing and singing and in, and living a life of pleasure, yeah, um, and a life of responsibility, mm -hmm. um, and that those things aren't separate. And so often, especially in the Westernized world, it's all just like separated out. It's just like, and even now in the the work of tending to the world, things feel so heavy and so serious that mm -hmm. we're. We don't often allow ourselves rest and joy. I'm wondering what would you say about that, what the need is for that? Yeah, you know, that's, it. I would say, a huge part of my work. I describe it as decolonial and spiritual. So decolonial meaning us unlearning and, and divesting from this oppressive paradigm, 
from the ways that we have been indoctrinated and maybe also collude and also the spiritual because sometimes as you said it we've sort of gone the other way where it's just about the work or it's just about the fight and what i've witnessed you know even in just the I would say the last eight years is we've gone the other way where we're so polarized as a society where the people that are leaders, community helpers, you know, are burnt out and, you know, we lose that, that spark, our, our soul, you know? And so I often share with my students, you know, if I were to put a percentage on it, I would say at least 60 70 percent spiritual actually you know and and we often think it's like the work is more um and and i i sort of am exaggerating you know because to your point is there needs to be balanced you know we're not meant to always be working we're not meant to always be producing we're not meant to always be knowing the news and all the terrible things that are happening in the world. And yes, we have a responsibility, but also we will not have any energy, life force energy for the work if we do not live, if we do not laugh, if we do not, you know, spend time with the earth and, and just be in awe of, of the world that, that we get to be with, you know? Um, and so, I think when you know we are sort of losing our way for me it's really coming back to our relationship with the earth and seeing nature how how there are seasons and you know treating ourselves in that way as well that that is our nature too yeah i'm a, um, a student and um of the celtic and pre-celtic um sort of shamanic traditional ways and um half the year there's a sort of a spiral or a wheel for the year and half the year is dedicated to the feminine energy and half the year is dedicated to the masculine energy and um and they talk about that in ireland in the ancient days the king of ireland there were lots of to us clans and then lots of provincial kings and then there would have been a one crowned high king of ireland at the hill of tara and when he was um when he was stepping forward to become king he had to marry the earth he had to marry the land um, and the goddess of the land mm. and um he wasn't he wasn't allowed to become king he wasn't deemed worthy of Of king if he couldn't um if he couldn't make that commitment to the earth and to the to be a protector of um of the land mm. and um and they said that when the, the kings um were not generous which is one of the worst things you can be in ireland is not generous if you're not generous um or if you're not a hospitable king or if you're not a just king a loving fair king that the, the land would tell the people that the king had had lost his way mm. and that the land would not be um, abundant mm -hmm. and um, we see this what this beautiful being is telling us right now mm -hmm. about how we're leading and how we are holding ourselves and showing up as a society mm -hmm. uh, she's trying to get our attention very desperately mm -hmm. um, that we are we have lost our way mm -hmm. yeah and that we keep bringing we keep bringing these the old principle of even to the change that we want to see we keep seeing to bringing forward the the old the old approaches and it's very push and drive and dominate let's mm -hmm. dominate like the social problem mm -hmm. and it seems to be we seem to be continuing to get stuck in that paradigm yes we tend to replicate the oppressive systems even when we are consciously trying to do the opposite and i think that speaks to you know the inner work that we need to do right like um you know the decolonizing of our mind the 
you know, um, and learning the programming. And I think that piece feels so important and doing so with compassion, with compassion for others and with compassion for ourselves, because you're right, we, we want to, um, you know, and, and th this happens in mainstream wellness and, and in mainstream social justice work as well is, is with force. And that's, you know, that, that is the oppressive paradigm. And I don't, and no one I know heals through force. No one I know learns through force, right? We are just not meant to do that. And so if, if we are to unlearn and heal from the oppressive paradigm, from the colonial capitalist patriarchy, it needs to be through love, through compassion, through allowing ease as well, through giving ourselves rest. Uh, so com coming back to the earth, coming back to our ancestral face of our lineage, there is something we were uniquely called to birth. And so, yes, we look to our ancestral ways and also what is, what is our unique medicine? What are we uniquely called uh, to do? And so, just really offering that and amplifying that message of the compassion piece and the gentleness and the ease is, is so important as well. I, mean, I love all of what you're sharing. And I'm like, how do you marry that with the, the sense of urgency mm -hmm. for the environmental uh, care that's needed or the social change that's needed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are living in urgent times and much of what we see, we do need to, you know, there are moments where we need to act urgently, but it doesn't mean that we need to live with a sense of urgency. And I think that's the distinction that I want to share with folks is there will be moments that we are called to show up. Right. But that's not how we're meant to live. And I think that's where sometimes we get it wrong because it does feel so overwhelming. We see it all over the news. We see great suffering. And so I think the first piece that I feel called into this moment is just, you know, here for all of us that are here, just inviting you into some breath. And any maybe tension that you're feeling from all that's happening in the world, just releasing that for now through an exhale. Maybe coming back to your heart, maybe even placing your hands over your heart if that feels right. Maybe another hand over your abdomen and just holding yourself here. And maybe also beginning to connect to the web of life and maybe even leaning back into the web of life. When I'm feeling tension, when I'm feeling pressured, I take deep breaths and I almost lean back. I remember that I don't have to do this on my own, that there is a whole web of life, that there is our great mother, there is our mother earth, there are energetic and spiritual beings that are here to support us. And so leaning into that support, leaning into that wisdom, leaning into that guidance. And so releasing that sense of urgency that I feel and knowing that I can show up for my part and that I don't have to do it all, that there is so much support here. And so I align with them, I co-create with them. And remembering we are meant to co-weave. So just remembering maybe that practice when we're feeling that sense of urgency or that pressure, connecting with the web of life and with all of creation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Reminds me very much of the um, the time of winter and the Celtic spiral and the we 
it's governed by the feminine energy of Ankaliak, and the old wise crone, and that she takes takes you into her cauldron. Um, and often it feels like nothing is happening because you don't see any of the like the little green shoots. But actually, this is where growth starts. All of it starts in this sort of emptiness and in this darkness. Um, and we are so conditioned to like for immediate results that we often abandon um, or we, we pull the roots out too quickly yeah. and we don't get the full ripe fruits or the full harvest that's possible. Mm-hmm. It's exactly what, that's faith to, to be willing to do that, knowing the urgency of the times, but to know that that is going to help um, is going to help bring a potency to the action. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and it will be lasting, you know, because, you know, you're, you're so right. It's we, we, we bypass the, you know, the, that liminal space, we bypass the spiritual, we bypass the unseen, we bypass the birthing, right? The, the, all the feminine, and this is, you know, not just a colonial paradigm, but we still live in a patriarchy. And, and so we almost need to, the Quero Inca lineage speaks to this time will be guided through the feminine because that's what we're missing, you know? And so for me, this is the place coming back to creation, coming back to my center, you know? Um, knowing that this is where I am most powerful. This is where I can offer medicine. And so inviting others as well, that it doesn't mean we're not doing the work. It means that we're tapping into what has been missing, which is the spiritual, which is the feminine. And so really remembering that this is what is needed for it to be lasting, for it to be sustainable, for it to be regenerative. We need to be in this place. And I'm tracking from myself as a white bodied, cisgendered, straight male, that how, um, how that beautiful the teaching you just gave us could be co-opted um, to slow things down, consciously or unconsciously, to say, oh no, things take time. No, you can't, that change isn't possible. It's too complicated, it takes time. And we have to have that razor sharp self-awareness mm-hmm. and razor sharp humility to be held accountable and razor sharp integrity to be in to not deceive ourselves or not deceive anybody else from where we're coming from so that we don't use that beautiful teaching um, to continue unnecessary, to continue oppression or an unnecessary timeline of of freedom. Mm -hmm. Yes, I appreciate you calling that in. You know, um, the majority of my work has been social justice work, has been anti-oppression work, um, has been in the decolonial. And because I have witnessed it going the other way, I now balance it with the spiritual and, and know that my, my purpose is, is sharing it as a medicine woman. Um, and so I speak to both that balance, decolonial and spiritual. And I so appreciate you calling in the decolonial because that is still needed. It doesn't mean that we ignore that, right? It doesn't mean that that we don't acknowledge the power that each one of us holds, and in particular, that white-bodied people hold, you know, uh, and and those that that do care, you know, are in positions of power. Change can very easily happen if we do our inner work or shadow work, and we use our power to create change, to right the wrongs, right. Um, in our own lineage, but also in the spaces that we inhabit, um, it can so easily happen. Yeah. Reminded of the story 
of uh, Mohandas Gandhi when he came from South Africa to India, having done some very powerful liberation work in South Africa. And he effectively got off the boat and his um, colleagues who had asked him to come back to India to help um, remove the British Empire. Uh, they said, okay, what are we going to do? Like, what are you going to do? And he says, I'm going to go on a walk about effectively. And he spent he, his first year walking the land of India to know the people, to know the, to know this earth here. Um, and people said, but we have to do something right now. And he said, this is so much bigger than me. And it's so much bigger than any of us. This is God's work. Um, and I have to be able to be I have to slow down enough to listen to what God is going to tell me what to do. Mm. And then he would do this all the way through. And it would madden people that didn't, because he wouldn't act at times. He says, I haven't been told what to do yet. Um, and I know he's not a flawless individual, but he, he seemed to hold that um, intersection of spirit and transformation. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that that's the work that we're called to now. Yeah, mm -hmm. doing the work that is needed, acknowledging the privilege and the power we hold and doing it, you know, being a good steward of our gifts, being a good steward of the power that we are also given, you know, and so, for example, white bodied people knowing that the power that you hold is unjust, right? Mm -hmm. And so being in relation and right relation and making things right, but also using that power, you know, I think part of what I also witness is, you know, in, in my work with white bodied people, it's, it's doing this to the power and, and that's also not the solution. We are at a time where we need to use all the tools. And so if you are, you know, given a platform or if you do hold a, position of power using that because we need all of it and doing so in integrity and right relation but using it because to discard it or to pretend it's not there only keeps us stagnant and keeps more of the same and so i i you know everyone that is here i also want to call you to your personal power and to honoring it uh, and and that power isn't just it doesn't have to be evil you know power doesn't have to be oppressive i think we see it through the lens of the colonial capitalist patriarchy but our power is also divine and we can use it in right relationship and so knowing that it's not just about us but it's about our relations and the people and the communities that we're called to lead and steward and so welcoming the power that, that you're given, that your ancestors, that the divine creator is giving you and sharing that. Yeah, beautiful. That idea that sort of that pushing back away from power, um, the words that come to mind is you don't empower anybody else by disempowering yourself. Mm -hmm. That's, that is that act of disempowering yourself doesn't actually be distribute power it just mm -hmm. you just get stuck like you said mm -hmm. um, and that idea that uh, power um, is can be holy mm -hmm. um just how we use it mm -hmm. yes. like all of these things just like like uh, anger and rage can be holy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so often especially in a sort of spiritual and wellness world or well-being world we get so binary about what it looks like to be a spiritual, a person that's living with spirit. Um, that's on a path of liberation that it has to be sort of, you know, I'm always nice and I always wear white mm -hmm. and I only eat um, lentils and kale or whatever it is. Um, and, you know, our ancestors never held those kind of binary views of what it looked like to be a human being infused with spirit. That there was, there was a wildness in our ancestors, a beautiful wildness, certainly in mine, and that they, they allowed deep, authentic expression, however spirit was coming through. Mm 
Yes, yes. And so honoring also our humanity, right? Of like, sometimes I'm going to get it wrong. Or, you know, uh, I, you know, to, and, and, I want to say being human is also part of the spiritual journey, right? It's we we sometimes in in mainstream wellness and spiritual spaces we we sort of you know view the our humanity as being inferior, right? It's it's part of what we're here to journey with, and 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 it is also divine to be human, and so honoring our faults, honoring when we get it wrong, our mistakes. They're, they're part of the journey. They're there to help us grow and evolve. And, and that's a part of our work as well. And so, you know, um, I love that you brought in, of you know, the, the anger and, and all those emotions that, that mainstream spaces don't welcome, right? We're sometimes going to be, yes, at peace, but I know I'm, I'm not, you know, I know that I'm not that way all the time. And, and my my anger at the systems and and my own pain that I've experienced and that my ancestors experienced, that's what propels us to change. We need those emotions. We're not just called to to be, you know, um, at peace all the time, right? It, it's balancing the emotions and and seeing what they're here to teach us. And so, yeah, really, really you know, expanding that message of honoring all those parts of ourselves. And, and even, and especially, I want to say those parts that, that new age and mainstream spirituality shuns are the emotions that we need even more. Yeah. And it's that idea, like every uh, wisdom tradition I've ever studied um, holds this understanding, this truth that all is one. There's a there's a web of interbeing, mm -hmm. and that that doesn't mean all is one except for your anger, Robert, or mm -hmm. except for your shame, or except for your grief. It's all is one. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the sentence. That's the that's the teaching. So that means all of it is part of it, mm -hmm. and I know in my own journey, the more I've allowed myself to feel deep grief and deep anger and deep shame and deep fear, um, the more I've loved myself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the more I've found peace in myself, or I've been able to hold a much deeper compassion for other people. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and that peace feels so important now, you know, allowing ourselves to be human, having compassion for self, because that's what's going to allow me to do that for others, right? Um, you know, and I also want to say for those of us that are doing social justice work, there comes a point where, you know, early on in our journey, I would say, where then we um, start to point fingers at others and you're not doing this and you're not doing that and you should be doing this. And so that humility, is so important, that compassion, but also humility, knowing that I have not always been here. We have all been programmed. We have all been indoctrinated and I have not always been at this consciousness. And so how I'm going to reach other people, how we are also going to restore harmony and balance is not by pointing the finger and judging others, but it's having humility and, and compassion for for that I was not always here. And so let me extend compassion, right? I can invite others, I can share with others. And also let me not use that force because that force is only going to divide us further, right? That force is, is just gonna shut us off. And, and I wanna be clear, I'm not condoning violence or white supremacy or, you know, heterosexism, homophobia, transphobia. I'm not condoning that. What I am saying is that we do need to come together because it is the systems and the elite that are dividing us. And so we need to give ourselves a fighting chance 
to come together. We are only going to shift the tide if there is a, a huge number of us. And so we're, we're, we're doing a lot of infighting and it's not allowing us to shift the tide. And so that compassion piece is so important and that humility piece to give ourselves a chance to come together. I've always been inspired by um, uh, Nelson Mandela um, and his incredible dedication to liberation in South Africa but and beyond. And even the people that he that were certainly labeled his enemies, he he just wouldn't accept them as his enemies. There was something about his internal state when he saw the Khan's oppressor, his jailer, politician, whoever it was, he said, I do not, I very clearly do not agree with this person, the way they see me, the way they treat me, the way they treat my 40 million brothers and sisters. But I am not going to hold them as an enemy, because as soon as I call them an enemy, then we're having the wrong conversation, we're in the wrong movement, we're in the wrong revolution, that these people are effectively my my lost brothers, they have be, they have become blinded um, by their by their hatred, um, which is because they have they have drunk too much of the water that they've been swimming, um, and it is our duty to also bring them back to love and to truth, not to conquer them in our own liberation. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and as you're speaking, I'm feeling the energy of the ancestors reminding us and all and reminding us that we are all peoples of the earth, that we all come from peoples of the earth, whether we you know, are in relation with that now or not, we all come from those peoples and that we have all come from peoples that lived in harmony with the earth. And also in this time, we are calling for the time where we, are, we will be in harmony with each other. And so that is part of the medicine that we are here to offer, reclaiming harmony with the earth, but also with each other, remembering that as well. Beautiful. We have like four minutes left. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any other questions for me or maybe we can post a question to the group and see what responses we get in the chat? Yeah, I'm, I'm really wondering what folks are receiving or what's landing for them. What is the message that really resonated with their heart? And so maybe inviting you here to the chat to share what is, you know, what has, what seed has been planted for you? I'm seeing here someone saying the message around humility hit very close to home. And even as I'm reading that, you know, when I remember I meant to co weave with creation, and when I see leadership as humility and in service, that calls me to show up differently, right? I, I don't I don't have to know it all. I don't I don't have to do it all and I don't have to know it all. And and that feels like such a sacred space. So thank you for, for calling that in. And pulling out the comments around unity and we have to come together being reminded of the feminine and the masculine and how easy it is to get caught in the masculine in the daily life in corporate environments which spills over into our personal realms if you see someone as your enemy you're having the wrong conversation and that urgent times without moving in a state of urgency. So that teaching alone, just how do we 
be in urgent times and not allow our bodies and our beings to be, be sort of in that frenetic urgency. Mm -hmm. How do we, yeah, learn to surf? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it feels, I was in Europe uh, several weeks ago and that people know that these are urgent times, but they're not living that state of urgency on a moment to moment basis like they are here, certainly in the United States of America. Yeah. What are the practices? This is a reflection for maybe for another conversation another time, but what are those practices that we have always had, but maybe the new practices that we need to bring together the new rituals, perhaps, and the new ceremonies for these times so that we can continue to be urgent, uh, but not caught by urgency. Yeah. Yes, and then I think the energy of ceremony and ritual, right? Like rather than, you know, living in this colonial time and, and the eight hour and like right away, right? It's ceremony and ritual and knowing I am creating I am I am creating with creation. And so if we can hold that, that can maybe begin to slow us down. And, and that leaning back, I do that all the time. I'm, you know, I'm a mama and I'm doing all the things. And and then when I feel it here in my chest is coming back. Yeah. Yeah, I often um I was feeling it in my chest today and I just brought myself down to my knees. So, okay, just be on your knees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know there's some links are going to be dropped into the chat um, to talk about your upcoming program, which is really exciting. And our next uh, conversation and um, that's coming up in this series. And then there's going to be a link to a little survey and um, a replay of how you can access this recording. Is there any way you want to just send us off? Yeah, I just want to invite you all here to your heart and thanking you for being here, thanking your ancestors, thanking the spirits that are here with us that allowed us to receive medicine that gave us guidance that co-created with us. And so giving our deep gratitude, giving our great mother deep gratitude and knowing that we come to you in reverence, Great Mother, and that we ask that you continue to use us, to speak through us, to speak to us, to help us walk in a good way as we move on and carry on. Help us remember our sacred purpose here. And just reminding each one of you here that you are sacred and divine, just as all of nature you are sacred and divine. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us, everybody. And what a beautiful conversation. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking forward to your program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cheer me well, everybody. Don't go straight back to your emails. Go outside. Mm -hmm.